Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 8, Lesson 4, Native Americans of the Greater Mississippi River Areas. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing today. Our first word is effigy, an image or representation often sculpted into a monument. Our next word is evident, clear to see or understand, plain. Our next word is ritual, a procedure related to religion, custom or culture. And our last word is teeming, filled to overflowing. We are now going to move into today's reading. More than 3,000 years ago, in the river valleys north, south, east, and west of the Mississippi River, several groups of early Americans began to spread out and inhabit this large region, rich in fertile soil. Because of the richness of the soil in the Mississippi River Valley, there was an abundance of plants that could be harvested for food. There was also a wide variety of fruits and berries that could be gathered. In addition, there were long, winding freshwater rivers that were teeming with fish. In the beginning, the groups of people who lived in this region survived by hunting, fishing, and gathering. Then, while continuing to hunt, many of them also began to farm. As you heard earlier, farming provided groups of people with a more reliable food supply. In particular, they began to grow sunflowers and squash. Later, they grew corn and beans. Because these early peoples began to farm the land, it became necessary for them to stay close to their crops. As a result, they began to construct permanent homes and settlements. Just as the ancient Egyptians, Maya and Aztec and Inca, built giant structures that rose up toward the heavens, so too did these early native peoples of Eastern North America. They built amazing mounds. Some of the mounds were small with rounded tops. Others were flat topped mounds. Others rose up into the sky like pyramids. Some were burial mounds, whereas others were strictly for ceremonial purposes. There were mounds shaped like animals too. Often the chief of the settlement, as the most important leader, had his home built on top of a mound. Today, archaeologists call this early native culture the Mississippian culture. The, the Mississippians were one of the three distinct groups known as mound builders. These three groups, the Adena, Hopewell, and Mississippians, lived at different times in and around this region of North America. The Adena were one of the early groups of people to build mounds. They built mounds that ranged in size from less than 20 feet to more than 300 feet in diameter. These mounds functioned as earthen burial chambers and religious ceremonial sites. The Adena inhabited a large area near the Ohio River in what are now the states of Ohio, India, West Virginia, Kentucky, and parts of Pennsylvania and New York. So this group of mound builders had moved into some areas that were connected to the Mississippi River by the Ohio River and some other areas that were quite a distance away from both rivers. When you consider how difficult it must have been to build the mounds, it seems likely that developing a system and plan were strong aspects of the cultural identity of the Adena. Building a mound required a lot of people working together. They had to move tons of earth from one place to another with nothing more than baskets to hold it. Why did these Native Americans build the mounds? Well, just as with many ancient cultures, the reason was connected to the Adena's religious beliefs. Proper burial and honoring their ancestors was very important to them. The largest and most impressive Adena burial mound still evident in North America is in West Virginia and is known as Grave Creek Mound. This is a modern name for an ancient site. More than 60,000 tons of soil were moved in the construction of this mound, and it is thought to have taken more than 100 years to complete. But perhaps the most interesting Adena construction is the curved serpent mound in Ohio, which was not a burial mound, but an effigy mound. In this case, this effigy mound is a mound shaped into a 1,370 foot snake. The Adena believed in the power of animal spirits, and this one is thought to have a very important religious site. It is the largest effigy earthwork in the world. Gradually, however, the Adena culture moved 
the Adena culture merged with other cultures to become the next group of native mound builders called the Hopewell. The Hopewell built well-constructed villages along riverbanks. They produced food by hunting, by gathering nuts, seeds, fruits, and roots, by farming and by fishing. They used animal hides for clothing, mats, and homes. They made stone pipes used copper, like the Adena traded with other native peoples. Today, scientists believe that Hopewell sites show evidence of trade connections from the Rocky Mountains to Lake Superior to North Carolina, practically across the entire continent. These sites also reveal what extraordinary artists the Hopewell are. Archaeologists know this from artifacts that have survived, including decorative pottery in the shapes of animals and human beings. Hopewell mounds were even bigger than the Adena mounds. It's possible that these mounds were used not only for burial purposes, but also as ceremonial templates and per temples, and perhaps even for defense purposes, in addition to providing high ground in times of flooding. Within Hopewell settlements, tribal and religious leaders would have had a significant amount of power. The Hopewell had rules, just as all societies do, designed to help large groups of people live in one place. Chiefs and religious leaders were often responsible for enforcing these rules. The final prehistoric cultural group of North American mound builders was the Mississippian culture. This was perhaps the most developed mound culture of all. They were a people who relied upon corn as their most important food crop. They lived in large towns, sometimes referred to as city-states. They were populated by hundreds, if not thousands of people. The largest Mississippian town was Cahokia in Missouri. Within each Missourian town, there were several mounds, but the most important mound was a flat-topped mound upon which sat a religious temple or a ruler's home. The flat-topped mound was usually constructed in a central plaza. Mississippian mounds were several stories high and were symbols of the people's religious beliefs. The Mississippians worshiped the sun and their ancestors. They were expert craftspeople, artists, and builders. The people were governed by powerful leaders and priests, and their religious beliefs touched every aspect of their lives. When Europeans came to North America, they encountered the Mississippian people. The largest mound in this town is one of the mounds still in existence today, and it is known as Monk's Mound. It covers an area of 16 acres. It is larger at its base than the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Over a long period of time, thousands of mounds were constructed by these three distinct groups of people, the Adena, Hopewell, and Mississippians. The Mississippian mound is in Georgia. Not, none of the names mentioned here are native names. We do not know what these people called their mounds or even what they called themselves. Ironically, it is the mounds that provide us with a window to the past. Often, thousands of, after thousands of years, the mounds and the artifacts that have been discovered in and around them speak to us of a time long, long before Europeans came to this continent. They speak of a time when native peoples worshiped many groups of nature gods and lived out their lives freely on this land. You may now move on to Unit 8, Lesson 4, Google Form.